here, Superman himself. Andrew Harrison will be reading the part of Ben. Virginia Frankovich will be reading the part of Julie. Adam Garrett will be reading the part of Leo. Christina Cortese will be reading Petra. Louise Wallace will be reading Mum. And also, I forgot to tell you, can you read Marie for me too? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and John Anthony will be the reading the part of Donahue. Um, John will hate me for saying this, but um, I really think it's necessary this year John received a QSM for his services to, to musical theatre and theatre over the years, which is really, really well deserved. There's a lot of, a lot of shows that have come to New Zealand that wouldn't be here. You'd be going to Melbourne for them if it wasn't for John Anthony. So I think that's really <laughs> for that later. Um, I'll, I'll, be, I'll, I'll pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be read, over on the side here reading some stage directions which are necessary and um, part of a, a operator later on in the play. So without further ado, folks, we'll get started. Barefoot on Queen. A young man finds himself at a literal crossroads with a host of strange encounters and important decisions to make set in the present day and time at the four-way intersection outside Whitcalls on Quinn Street, Auckland. Scene one. The stage is dark. Leo is sitting on his guitar case centre stage with a guitar on his knee. A film of the Auckland intersections of Victoria Street and Queen Street with Whitcalls on the main corner is projected onto Leo and the wall behind him. Complete with traffic soundscape, he sports a tailored jacket, shirt, tie, folded up, or cut off jeans, and bare feet. Leo speaks the conversation between Red Man and Green Man. Hey Red Man, want to hear what I can do? Shut up, Green Man. Hey Red Man, want to see what I can do? Shut up, Green Man. Hey Red Man, want to hear what I can do? Seriously, Green Man, fuck up. Hey, Red Man. No, I do not want to hear what you can do. Shut up, stop it. I've heard your stupid sound, now give it a rest. Shut the fuck up. Hey, Red Man. Scene two. Leo moves his case himself <coughs> to outside Whitcalls. He slings the guitar over his head and gives it a quick tune before playing. The level of, mus of his musical talent is not important, though the song should be legible. The song is your song by Elton Drive. Uh, Elton John. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> that's a good one, you should have gone with that. <laughs> Pedestrian siren sounds. Mr. Donahue <coughs> walks past on a cell phone and throws a $20 note into the guitar case. He gives Leo a wink. Donahue is stopped, silently distracted by Marie, who has crossed from the opposite direction. They share interaction while Leo sings, and Marie tries to convince Donahue into buying. As Leo starts to sing again, Marie very clearly reaches for Donahue's crotch. How wonderful life is. When you're in the world. Donahue looks around nervously, stealing a glance at Leo, who is lost in the song. He shrugs Mary off him and hurries on his way. Petra enters, her head buried in Jane Eyre by Emily Bronte. She sits cross legged on the ground. After a few moments, Donahue enters. Petra rolls out of the way before Donahue walks into her. She gets to her feet. Donahue minds pressing the button. They wait together in silence. Petra looks on. Nervous when Leo starts singing. I want you to notice when I'm not around. I wish I was special. You're so fucking special. But I'm a creep. I'm a weirdo. What the hell am I doing here? I don't belong here. I don't belong here. I don't belong here. Petra is embarrassed at Leo. She rushes across the road and trips. Her bag spills all over the road. She scrambles to collect her things. Leo puts down his guitar case and speaks to help. You okay? Um, yeah, I'm fine. Do you want me to follow that guy? Pull down his pants or something? <laughs> He'd probably love that. Who was he? Ex-boyfriend? Boss? Sugar daddy? Not really, no. No to which? All of the above. 
I have to go. Uh, you're welcome. Thanks. Where are you going? Why are you singing whole songs? You can't ask people to answer a question with another question. I think I just did, though. Uh, wait, yeah. You dropped this. Scene three, Leo flips through the pages, examines the cover, and drops it into his guitar case. Donna, he enters again, stopping a donut with a copy in his hand. He minds pushing the buck next to Leo. Spare buck, man? Or the number of an important friend? I do know someone actually probably right up your alley. Really? Sure. He takes a pen from his pocket and picks up a five dollar note from Leo. Uh, from the guitar case, he writes a number on it and gives it to Leo. Well, what's this? A number. Um, what for? I'm interested in commissioning your services. You don't even know what my services are, though. <laughs> I should, surely can find a use for you. You're a musician, aren't you? Yeah. Then I would like to commission you. Just like that? It's a dog-eat-dog world, dog, boy. You don't take an opportunity where they're offered. And you always fall on the wayside unnoticed and unmissed. How do you know I'm any good? I just heard you, silly. Yeah, but those were covers. And not even the whole thing, like snippets of covers. We could do some kind of interview if you were preferred. Well, I'm a little unsure of what it actually is that you want from me. I own a state in par now. Why don't you come for dinner tomorrow evening? We can talk business then. What business, though? For a pretty boy, you're not that smart, are you? What's your name, boy? Leo. I'm Philip Donoghue. The Philip Donoghue. It depends. What have you heard? Ah, uh, you know, the usual, I'm sure. Built a record company, nurtures young artists under his wing. Then yes, the Philip Donoghue. Well, it's nice to meet you, Mr. Donoghue. <laughs> it's my grandfather around. Philip will do just fine. Well, forgive me for being frank, Philip, but I have no credentials, no professional musical experience. Well, how are you ever going to get any if someone doesn't take give you a break? That's true. <laughs> Tell you what, I have a feeling we can come to some kind of arrangement. I've heard back in my... I'll head back to my office and cancel a couple of appointments. Then why don't you meet me back here in a wee while and we'll talk a bit more detail and nut out the particulars. Oh, really? That would be amazing. I'll, I'll be here. Well, good old. See you in a little while then. He goes. Leo dances around stoked. Scene four. Enter Petra. Did I brought my book here? Does this mean I can have my book back? <laughs> it does definitely not mean you can have your book back. But it does mean that this might be the luckiest day of my life. Because you have my book? No. Well, well, yes, actually. I have a free copy of Jane Eyre. My rent is paid this week and I scored myself a job interview. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> if you do not have a free copy of Jane Eyre, you have stolen a copy of Jane Eyre, which I intend to reclaim. Because you don't have a free copy of Jane Eyre. What's the job? I think I'm being commissioned to write. Stoked. That's awesome. <laughs> Can I have my book back? Oh, you've the book already. Dude, check it out. That is the most epic thing I've ever seen. What's the most epic thing? This. Come here. That's the most epic thing you've ever seen. You lead a sad, sad life. They're cool, man. I love how they have eight legs and, and heaps of eyes. It's like they can see everything, but they can't share it with anyone. Except other spiders. And let's be honest, the other spiders already know, because they have heaps of eyes, too. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, you scared him away. I scared him away. Yeah, with your flustering about. It scared me away. Why do they even need that many legs? Have you ever tried balancing on a web you spine yourself? I have two legs and my life is quite fulfilling. What's that? What? On my leg. What the fuck is on my fucking leg? <laughs> Leo looks and tries not to laugh. Petra looks at the spider on her legs. She tries to brush it off frantically and starts screaming and hollering. <coughs> you have to stop screaming like that. You sound like you're going to be bloody raped. You really not like spiders that much. Um, no. Not liking them is a gross understatement. And if I could banish the world of every species and arachnid uh, on the planet, I'll do that. Um, I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding, man. They're not even that bad. They are that bad. They're exceptionally that bad. Okay, well, it's gone now, so you can probably stop doing that. <laughs> Where is it? The spider. No, the charming little puppy I'm trying to avoid. Yes, the spider. I don't know. Well, find it. Well, how am I supposed to find it? Oh, I don't know. With your eyes, it's a pretty good start. Have you ever tried looking for a needle in a haystack? This could be comparable. <sighs> Please find it. Fuck. Fine. 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 Found it. Kill it. You kill it. 
I'm not touching it. But well, I'm not killing it. Why? Well, what did it do to me? You can't answer a question with another question. I think I just did though. Please kill it or get rid of it. Just do fucking something. Oh my god. Not out of the book, you douche. Well, it's just one of those blank pages at the start. You want me to get rid of it or not? You're hilarious, so I've never seen anyone dance around like that over a spider. What happened? Dude. Dude, are you okay? <coughs> There's so many ends, and their legs are so tightrope walkers can't balance with two legs. Don't laugh at me. I can't help it. You're opening yourself up for it. I kind of do. You wholeheartedly do. Don't you have anything you're afraid of? Not anything that's about an inch in diameter and harmless. So what are you afraid of? Nothing. I don't think, eh? Bullshit. No, really, I just don't get that scared, to be honest. Not monsters in the wardrobe that'll eat you if your door is left open, or the dark, or what might happen if you don't wash your hands? <coughs> wash your hands 37 times in a row. No. I don't believe you. Everyone's scared of something. Okay, um, I'm kind of scared of dying. And the people I care about not knowing how much I care about them, but everyone's scared of that kind of stuff. I'm not scared of dying. So everyone minus one then. <laughs> Why are you scared of dying? I guess it has something to do with the not knowing what happens to us once we die. And the loneliness, I suppose. Don't you believe in heaven and God and shit? Oh, well, yeah, I do. <laughs> but nothing's 100% proven, is it? We're just sort of riding on blind faith that God has this super haven for us to chillax in. That's the point though, isn't it? To have faith? Yeah, it is, but I don't know if that's enough for me. Not right now, anyway. It will be. How do you know? I don't. But you have to die. That's 100% guaranteed. And eventually, I'm sure you'll come to some kind of peace with it. Either that, or you'll die terrified. Lovely. It's a straight up truth, dude. Only sure things in life are death. Taxes and wanking. <laughs> So, uh, what are you afraid of then, besides spiders? I'm petrified of my mum's aunt Malford seeing me before she leaves, before she leaves Christmas dinner, and the smell of her denture cleaning soaking into my pores as she kisses me like a billion times. And that's it. I don't, I don't want to never be good enough. Good enough at what? Everything, life, you know, like there's this country of four million people, and there's, and it's like there's always someone better. Someone smarter, someone taller, someone bigger boobs, someone more talented, someone prettier. Do you get it? Yeah, I get it, but you don't have to be scared of things like that. I don't ask to be. Well, doesn't it come down to what you are just saying about having faith? How so? Well, it's a matter of perspective, don't you think? Well, what's considered smart to one person isn't what's smart to another. I mean, you're not a pedophile or murderer or rapist, so I think you win there. And as for the pretty thing, Beauty's in the eye of the holder. Have a bit of faith in yourself, Pet. What did you call me? Pet. How do you know that? Know what? 